Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of my Huda Beauty eyeshadow palettes from worst to best. So if you want to hear my thoughts on the whole product line, then just keep watching. <laughs> Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. And I am here with one of my most highly requested videos. I'm going to rank all of my Huda eyeshadow palettes. Now I did this back in May of 2018. So we're coming up on two years. So I thought I would do an updated one. If you aren't aware, what inspired me to do these ranking videos to begin with was Kelsey Brianna J. She was the first person that I ever saw to create these ranking series, which seems to have taken the beauty community by storm. Everybody loves these ranking videos. I think they're so fun. So I just wanted to give a little bit of love to my girl, Kelsey. The reason I wanted to do it this time of year is because last year, Huda actually had an amazing Black Friday sale on all of her palettes. They were priced very, very cheap compared to their full price. So I don't know what she's doing this year, but just in case so that I can have you prepared, I have have all of the eyeshadow palettes that are still currently available either at Sephora or her website and I'm going to rank them all for you and tell you what's up with all of them. I do plan on doing other brands as well during this time of year just because of all of the sales and of course for buying gifts as well. But we're gonna kick it off with Huda. So I have 17 palettes to share with you guys today. So we're gonna start off at 17. This is my least favorite eyeshadow palette in her line. Unfortunately, this is the Huda Beauty Sand Haze palette, and I'm surprised. This is a newer palette from her. It came out about a month or so ago. This was easily my least favorite of the other two that came out in the collection, but I didn't realize it would end up being my least favorite in her entire line. If I'm being honest, the color story here does not speak to me at all. And in this line, I wasn't really a huge fan of the formulas she came out with compared to what she's already come out with. I don't really like the shimmers in here. I feel like they're a bit flaky. The mattes are okay. They don't blend amazing, but overall, just the color story here is underwhelming for me and also the quality isn't super good in my opinion just compared to what she already has available so that's why this is ranking in at number 17. Moving on to number 16 I have the Mauve Obsessions palette. This is an older one from her. This ranked very low in my last video as well just because the color story doesn't speak to me really at all. It's kind of a more plain palette which might be something that you're interested in. I think the quality in here is very nice. What I really like is the range in depth in this palette. That's why I prefer this one over the sand haze because I feel like you get a little bit more dimension in this palette and some depth as well. It's just not one that I ever reach for. If I'm being honest, I don't think I've reached for this since the last Huda Beauty ranking video I did two years ago. So that tells me something. That's why it's ranking so low. It doesn't speak to me and I never use it. Number 15, unfortunately, is the Ruby Obsessions palette. I really love the idea of this palette. I think the quality is decent for what it is. But I just don't find myself reaching for these colors a lot. And not only that, but these don't really give me the look that I want. I find that whenever I use this, the look that I get is almost like hot pink. It's not this red look that I'm going for. So I don't necessarily get the look that I want. So while it is still a pretty palette and while I do feel like I get really pretty looks with it, it just doesn't really turn out quite how I want it to. So that is an issue with quality. So that's why it's maybe not the best quality palette in her line. And it's just not a color story that I reach for, but it's definitely not a bad palette. If you think this is a color story that you've been looking for, it's very good. Just know that you're not going to get a really hot red look. You're going to get more of a hot pink look. Moving on to number 14, this is the Purple Haze Obsessions. This again is another one of her newer palettes. And the reason why this is ranking so low is I just feel like her line has a lot more to offer. The quality in here is okay. I do like it and it's definitely workable, but I do feel like she has has better palettes in her line. Again, with this collection of three shadows that she came out with, while they're good, they're just not the best that she can do. I find that some of the shimmer shades are a little bit flaky and then it also is a lot of blending with this palette. The mattes just don't blend really seamlessly so it is a little bit more work and I just have other 
palettes in this line that are purple that I prefer. This color story isn't quite purple enough for me. I just don't like the mattes in here. I wish they were more of a bright purple because here they're very muted. Moving on to number 13. Now this is the purple palette that I do like a little bit more. This is the Amethyst Obsessions. This is an older palette from one of the original releases and I much prefer the colors in here when it comes to purples. However, what I don't like is I feel like these colors aren't that pigmented. They definitely take a lot of building up to get to show up on your eyes. But the reason why it's ranking higher than the purple haze is because the color selection is better. It just takes a little bit more building up to get it. But once you're there, you're there and your look is going to be stunning. But just know it's going to take a little bit of extra time. It's going to take a little bit of extra blending and building. But the looks that you get are absolutely stunning. So if you are a purple fan and you're looking for a semi affordable purple palette or something that you can just kind of grab and know you're going to get a purple look with, then this one is a good one. Moving on to number 12. So starting from here, the palettes are going to start getting really good. It was definitely harder to place these ones, but we have the Nude Light. Now this came from her Nude Collection, which for some reason, these nine pans are amazing quality. I feel like normally her nine pans, while they're still good, they're just not as good as her regular larger size made in Italy palettes. All of her nine pan palettes you will find are made in China. And I do really think that there is a decrease in quality, but that is made up for in the price if you ask me because they are much more affordable and she does curate such beautiful palettes. And I really love this one. I think the quality in here is phenomenal, especially for the price. It's just for me, I'm not in love with this color story. I think it's really beautiful, but it's a bit too light and pastel-y for me. And I feel like I can get these colors in her larger pan palettes, which I do prefer the formula of to begin with. However, this shade right here is one of the most beautiful lid shades. And especially if you have more of a fair skin tone, I do highly recommend this one. It's really, really nice. It's just not my kind of color story. It's a bit too light. Moving on to number 11. This palette is so good. This is the Emerald Obsessions palette. And I really hope they never discontinue this palette because it truly is such a unique palette. You get some khakis in here, you get some turquoises, you get some mints. There are all different kinds of looks that you can get within this little nine pan palette. Like here's the mint row, here's the green row, here is the khaki row. I'm really impressed with how this little guy is curated. I'm impressed with the quality of this. Now the reason why this is ranking where it's ranking is simply because I don't reach for it a ton. And looking at it right now, I do want to reach for it. The quality is so good. I'm feeling really creative just looking at this palette. So it's just a matter of how often I use it. And this just isn't a part of my everyday color story, so I don't use it too often. But if you're looking for a palette that has these colors, definitely look into this palette, especially because this is a very unique palette. I feel like I do not have another palette in my collection that has the same colors that these do. So this one is really one of a kind. Moving on to number 10, we have the Topaz Obsessions palette. And I feel like this is another quite unique palette. It is a bit too warm for me. I do prefer cooler tones. So with this look, you're really only going to get a fiery warm look. However, it is a gorgeous palette. I feel like the colors for a warm palette are quite unique. I feel like I don't get a lot of warm looks that I get with this palette specifically because of this very cool orange shade right here. It's a very unique color and I love the shimmers in here. I think they look stunning on the lid. So every time I have worn this palette, I have absolutely absolutely loved every single look that I've come up with. If you are a warm palette lover, I feel like this is a must have in your collection because it is almost a unique kind of warm palette and it's really compact and so beautiful. Number nine, this is the last of the Haze Obsessions palettes from her newest mini line. This is Khaki Haze Obsessions. So this palette isn't perfect, but it's ranking relatively high because I absolutely love this color story. For me, these are great everyday tones and I find myself wanting to reach for this palette palette all the time. So for me, out of sheer number of uses I've already had in the short time that I've owned this palette, has to rank it higher. I just love the colors. Though with these Haze Obsessions, the quality is a little bit off compared to what she normally does. I especially find in here with the deeper mattes that you do need to blend a little bit extra. But if you are looking for these khaki, green, and copper tones, this is a gorgeous palette. So I don't want to steer you away from this palette. I really do love it. It's been one 
one of my current favorites for sure. But if you're really into quality, I do think Huda has a better formula to offer. Moving on to number eight. This quality is impeccable. Again, from the nude line, this is the Nude Rich. So in this nude collection, she came out with different depths, a light, a medium, and then this here was the Rich. Now, the reason why this is ranking a little bit lower, it's still on the higher side, but it's just a bit too deep for me as far as tones. I mean, I could definitely get the exact same look that I'm wearing now with this palette. I love the quality in here. If you have a deep complexion, I highly, highly recommend that you look into this palette. It is gorgeous quality with gorgeous, rich tones. You have some warms, you have a plum. So good, you guys. This one will not disappoint you. Moving on to number seven, we have the new nudes. So now we're going into the territory of her larger palettes. Like I said before, her larger palettes, they are made in Italy and their formula is genuinely better. You're paying a higher price, but you are getting a better formula. Now the reason reason why this is ranking quite low is because I just don't find myself reaching for this as much as I used to. This actually was one of my favorite, if not my favorite palettes in my Huda ranking video last time, but I think my taste has changed. I don't like this quality as much because I feel like the colors pull very pink. I just don't really get that super pink vibe from this palette. Not only that, it does contain pressed glitters, which I don't mind a good pressed glitter. I really don't, but I think we've move past press glitters in the makeup industry and I just don't want to fool with glitter all over my face at the end of the day. I do love the purple tones but like I said I feel like the look that I get isn't exactly the look that I see when I look at this palette and while it is gorgeous it's just not the color story that I've been reaching for a lot lately. This is number six so this is the palette that I'm wearing right now. This is the Naughty palette, the Naughty Nudes I guess is what it's called. This is the newest palette that just came out. This is the palette that I am wearing on my eyes today. I absolutely love this look and I'm so angry with myself because I filmed this. Like I was posing for the camera, I was applying very careful and steady, and then I realized I forgot to press the record button and by the time I realized that it was way too late. So unfortunately, I do not have a tutorial for this look, but really simple. I mostly played with the plum on the inner and outer corner for a halo eye and then I put the red shade Desire in the center of my eyelid and I did a lot of blending with that. So that is how I got this look. But anyways, I do really like this palette. I think the quality of it's really nice and I think if you have a deep complexion This is going to be your go-to palette from this line. There are some things that I don't like about this palette I really do like the color story But what I do not like about this is it just has the same color story as a lot of her other palettes I said this in my original review But if you have the nude rich and the nude medium then you have just about almost every shade that is in this palette So this is ranking where it's ranking just because it's not unique. If you don't have the other small palettes in your collection though, I definitely think you should go for this, especially if you have a deep complexion as well. This is like the new nudes deep complexion friendly palette. So it's gorgeous. The quality is really great. I just feel a little bit gypped because I had much higher expectations for this release. Moving on to number five. This is the Rose Gold Remastered palette. This is one of her first palettes that she ever released except it's the redone version so these are basically the exact same colors as the first Huda palette that ever came out was just in a better formula I definitely have a soft spot for this palette I think that's the real part of the reason why it's ranking very high because I don't really reach for it a ton but this shade pink diamond is one of my favorite eyeshadows ever I think it's the most gorgeous multi-dimensional glitter shade all over the eyes and I feel like this palette really did shift the industry there really wasn't a palette quite like this on the market and I think I have outgrown these tones a little bit but I feel like this is a very versatile palette you can get some cooler tone neutral looks you can get some bright pinks you can get some golden brown looks I really love this for the amount of diversity that you can get with this palette and I really do enjoy the quality of it as well the mattes are a tad dry but I think they still work really good and whether it's nostalgia or I actually just love the colors. I really love this palette and it's one of my favorites from her line. Moving on to number four. Now this one, I'm not exactly sure if it's still available. It is available only on the Huda website, but it's currently sold out. But just in case it comes back, you need to pick up the Smoky Obsessions palette. This is by far one of her best nine pan palettes. You'll see mine is gross. There was a black shade here. 
there's no longer a black shade here. It was a very, very messy accident. But I absolutely love the tones in this palette. I am a neutral girl at heart. So this has the cooler toned neutrals that I feel comfortable in for every day. I would love the black to be here, but even though it's not, I still absolutely love just the simple brown smoky eyes that I get. And there really isn't another palette like this in her line as well. She doesn't really play too much with these cooler tones. So this is not only a unique palette in her collection, Collection, but it's also one of the best quality. So while I don't think it's currently available anywhere, if you happen to see it, pick it up. It is great. Moving on to number three, we have the Desert Dusk palette. And this was my number one favorite for the longest time. I still love it so much for the color story. I love the mix of purples and these orange shades. To me, that's one of the most flattering eye looks, in my opinion, for my skin tone and just what I prefer. I love purples and oranges. They're complementary colors and they look so good together. So every single look I've created with this palette, I absolutely love. But here's the downside to this palette. And if this has happened to you, please let me know. This palette released about two and a half years ago, and I really feel like the formula has changed over time. I do find that with these bigger palettes from Huda, longevity is a problem. And this has pretty much completely dried out. Like I would definitely consider repurchasing this palette because I love the tone so much, but I do feel like the shadows are suddenly more dry and they're a little bit flaky and they don't adhere to the skin as well. So that is the reason why this got bumped down because it is my favorite color story. It's probably my favorite palette at heart. But there's something about the formulation in here that has dried out. And yes, I have had this for two and a half years. It is past its expiration date, but I do find with higher quality palettes that this is not a problem. This does dry out if you have it for a while, so just be prepared for that. Moving on to number two, we have the Nude Medium Palette. So again, this nude collection, her formula is impeccable, and I like these tones a lot more than the other two. You'll recall, the Nude Light, I said, was way too pastel pink for me, and the Nude Rich was too deep for me. Now, this is what we're talking about, the medium tone I absolutely love. Again, kind of similar to the look that I have on today. I just find the quality in this to be quite spectacular and this is a great little guy that I love to reach for. I love the looks that I get for this. The shimmers are just so intense. The mattes are buttery and creamy. You have the look done for you because it is in such a small compact palette. So I reach for this a lot and I love how portable it is, how great for travel it is. You get a great Huda formula in here so that is why this is one of my absolute favorites from Huda. I highly recommend it and it's from the more affordable side because her bigger palettes are much more pricey but these little guys are amazing. All right guys, so it is time to move on to my number one favorite. <sighs> I just love the Mercury Retrograde palette so much. This is the palette that came out last year and I think I like it so much because it's just so different from everything else that she has in her line. I will admit it's probably not my most worn but whenever I want a different kind of look, I go to this palette. I feel like I can get such a unique look and I can create a variety of different looks from this palette. I will say it's probably not the number one that I recommend, but for me, this is my number one favorite. I love the color story. I do not have another palette that has this kind of color story. I love the way that she played with texture and dimensions in this palette. It just is truly a unique palette. I love the purple tones in here. I love that you can get some warm tones in here. This is not a palette for everybody though. If you're a neutral lover, you're gonna hate this palette. This will not be your number one favorite if you own all of these these, but if you want something a little bit more unique, because I feel like Huda's colors do tend to be a little bit more repetitive, this one is my favorite. It's the most inspiring in her line for me. And last year when it came out, it really got me excited for the brand to see what else she was going to come out with, which is why I said I was disappointed with the Naughty, because I wanted something to surprise me like Mercury Retrograde did. But anyways, that is currently where all of my Huda palettes stand nowadays. I feel like it was really good to do a refresher because we have some new palettes and also my tastes have changed, the trends have changed, and techniques have changed. Let me know your favorite Huda palettes down below. And I hope you guys of course found this helpful. That's why I created these videos. So if you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would absolutely love it if you would consider taking the time to do so. I do have some more ranking videos on the way and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.